Welcome back. We hear a lot about the vaccines in the lead for COVID-19 from companies like Moderna, Pfizer and AstraZeneca, but there are more than 100 others in development behind them. Meg Terrell has a look at what could come next. When you think about how vaccines are made, the Army may not be the first thing that comes to mind. But its scientists at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research have played a major role in their development. Our institution has been at the forefront of addressing emerging outbreaks for over 100 years. It's contributed to about half of the vaccines approved today in the U.S. for viruses like rubella and flu. The idea is that the work that we do to protect our military, especially in the space of infectious diseases and emerging infectious diseases, is applicable to protecting our civilians and the global population as well. Now it's hard at work on SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. The approach is different from others. It uses a protein called ferritin to expose the immune system to the coronavirus's spike. By taking this protein away from the virus and just putting it onto, onto a stable protein, we can actually generate an immune response without any of the illness associated. And so have a very safe uh, molecule. The team aims to boost the immune response with what's known as an adjuvant. Their goal is to start human trials by the end of summer or early fall. Well, our vaccine is part of Operation Warp Speed and our institution is part of Operation Warp Speed. We're not in that first group of uh, prioritized vaccines which have the ability to manufacture millions, hundreds of millions of doses on a very short timeline. Our vaccine is in that, that, that second tier that is looking towards the, the, the long-term approach. And the researchers say the technology has an even broader potential. Long-term, after we get this vaccine into humans and make sure that it's safe and looks to be effective just for SARS-CoV-2, we can then pivot this platform to become a pan-coronavirus or universal vaccine. And guys, what a pan-coronavirus vaccine might mean is that it could protect against not just SARS, MERS, COVID-19, uh, and even other coronaviruses that we haven't yet detected in humans, but also potentially some of the common colds.